The story I am about to share began a year ago. Marinka and I had been living together for a year, and things were going well. We were making plans for our future together, contemplating marriage and starting a family. However, everything changed due to an act of betrayal. Around the same time, my grandmother passed away. Before her death, she entrusted me with her gold and expressed her desire for me to keep it as a memento. There was a considerable amount of gold, as she had a good position during the Soviet era, earned a decent income, and indulged herself with expensive jewelry. I set aside a few valuable items, some of them adorned with diamonds. However, I decided to turn the remaining pieces, which held no significant value, into scrap and have something custom made from them. Upon receiving a recommendation, Marinka and I sought out a skilled jeweler. We visited his shop to peruse catalogs and discuss our ideas. I must admit, he was truly a master of his craft. The showcase displayed mesmerizing samples of his exceptionally beautiful and imaginative work. As I flipped through the catalogs, my eyes widened in awe. The jeweler had a unique style, and all of his creations were not only stunning, but also incredibly unique. During our visit, I became particularly drawn to a wide bracelet designed for men, while Marinka picked out earrings and a ring for herself. Even then, I noticed a peculiar gleam in her eyes as she looked at the jeweler. Your order will be ready in three to four weeks, the jeweler informed us. In response, Marinka smiled at him, captivating him with her enchanting smile. Once we returned home, she couldn't stop talking about the jeweler's jewelry and our upcoming order. The next day, Marina woke up with the realization that she had made a mistake in ordering the jewelry. She decided that a different set would suit her better. Honey, I've already called the jeweler and I'll go after work today to change my order, she informed me. Well, it's your decision. If you think it suits you better, go ahead, I replied. The following day was Marina's day off. While scrolling through social media, I noticed new photos on Marina's page. She was posing with jewelry, a ring, a bracelet, a necklace, and earrings. Curious, I asked her about it. I tried on some jewelry from the display yesterday and decided to take a photo immediately. Isn't it beautiful, she said. It's really beautiful, I responded, feeling a bit uneasy about the fact that the jeweler had allowed her to try on and take pictures of the jewelry without saying anything. A week later, I was surprised to find more photos of Marina wearing jewelry on her page. She explained the situation to me. You know, I thought and decided that this ring would look better on my ring finger instead of my index or middle finger, she explained. So I went back to the jeweler and he told me that this particular design wouldn't look good on the ring finger. I had to choose a new set all over again. Two weeks later, when I came home from work, I found the completed jewelry on the table. I was taken aback because the receipt was in my name. How were you able to pick it up? I asked. I called the jeweler to check if it was ready. It was, so I used the money we had set aside for it, paid for it, and picked it up, she replied. What's wrong? She asked, sensing my growing frustration. But at this point, the whole situation was starting to make me angry. Inexplicable visits to the jeweler, excessive attention. How would you handle such a situation? Well, as expected in the evening, I stumbled upon new photos of Marina showcasing jewelry on her social media page. We had already had a major disagreement about this, and I couldn't tolerate it any longer. A few days later, we were invited to our friend's place. Marina meticulously selected a dress and matching accessories. Meanwhile, I sat across from her, observing intently. She was almost ready when she pulled out a small box from the dresser drawer. She took out a ring and slipped it onto her finger. It was quite large and unique, something I had never seen Marina wear before. Is that a new ring? I don't remember seeing it, I remarked. Yes, it's just costume jewelry, she replied, visibly flustered. I approached her and took her hand, examining the ring closely. It was undeniably not costume jewelry. The piece was crafted from gold, and its intricate design was reminiscent of a specific jeweler's style. I even had a feeling that I had seen it in a display case somewhere. Do you think I'm foolish? I couldn't hold back any longer. Why are you angry? What did I do? Marina responded, inadvertently giving herself away. 
the truth was, I wasn't gullible, and I understood perfectly well that such extravagant gifts didn't come without a cost. Marina definitely couldn't afford this ring, and if she had ordered it herself, I would have known. Moreover, those mysterious trips to the jeweler. I wasn't oblivious to the connections. We started arguing. In the end, Marina, in tears, began to justify herself, explaining that she had succumbed to temptation upon seeing those exquisite pieces, and the jeweler had offered her the ring as a reward. I had no desire to hear any more explanations or delve into the details. We ended our relationship, and I'm uncertain of her whereabouts now. What can I say? It was foolishness, a lack of self-control that ultimately led to betrayal, all for the sake of material possessions. Well, I suppose it wasn't meant to be.